Brands invest heavily in winning us over. When they've succeeded, it's even harder for them to retain our favorable attitudes. One of the main problems they face are attacks from their competitors. In a marketing context, attitude inoculation has gained attention for having the potential to be an effective means of maintaining resistance to attitude change. Inspired by medical vaccination, William J. McGuire developed attitude inoculation theory. Like a weakened virus being administered to a patient, a person will be exposed to a tailored argument, challenging a targeted belief. Straight after the attack, the person is given a supportive counterargument. With medical vaccination, it's important to get the dose right. When it comes to attitude inoculation, I came to wonder, what are the differences between a strong and weak dose? How long will resistance last? And what happens when a reminder booster message is included? To date, my studies include the longest measure of inoculation over time, the first measure of booster messages applied to inoculation, and the first work exploring the effects of various inoculation message strengths. I designed several quantitative survey experiments where two fictional brands went head to head. One brand was the attacker, the other was the defender, using reactive inoculation to answer attacks. The experiments tested had various time delays, message, framing, and condition groups. I measured the retention of purchase intent, cognition, and emotions. My research has found a strong inoculation argument is usually the most effective means of maintaining purchase intent, but this is only true immediately following an attack. After about two weeks, a weak inoculation argument becomes significantly better than a strong argument. After around three weeks pass, it turns out that a strong argument is even worse than having used no inoculation. What drives these long-term effects is emotion. As emotion drops, so too does the purchase intent. Strong arguments generate more initial emotion, but the retention of emotion will undergo a significant drop over time. When a booster message is included, the negative effects of inoculation are dialed down. However, the same booster is even more effective when there is no inoculation at all. Once again, rendering a strong inoculation significantly less effective than no inoculation. Whether a booster is applied or not, long-term, a strong inoculation argument is always worse than no inoculation. When marketers use inoculation campaigns, strong inoculation arguments should only be used when short-term gain is desired. When the goal is long-term favor, a weak inoculation is a better strategy. Sometimes it's better to whisper than it is to shout. Other times, it's better to say nothing at all.